Hello students, welcome to Affairs Cloud. My name is Vikas. We have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through Play Store. Once you have downloaded the application, you will be able to easily log in using your Gmail ID. Once you have logged in, you will be redirected to this page where you will be getting this UI and there will be option for home, all courses, my courses and doubt section. On this application, you will be getting multiple PDFs, multiple content on daily basis that will be enhancing your learning. Our first segment is daily current affairs. We make sure to provide you current affairs on daily basis in both English as well as in Hindi content. The PDFs for the same are uploaded on our application. And apart from this, we also make sure to provide you with quizzes that will help you to revise the content after you have gone through the PDF. Next comes our weekly content. The content is also provided in both English as well as in Hindi. And here we also make sure to provide you quiz also of that past week's current affairs that will be enhancing your learning as it is a compilation of the important topics, important MCQ questions for the last week. Similar for the monthly, the PDFs are very important. They provide you insights of various topics as well as we also make sure to provide you the quiz of monthly questions that are very important for learning. Next, we also provide you with important PIB articles on daily basis so that you can go through these particles and have an insight about that particular topic. Not just this, we also make sure to provide you important events that are happening globally and make sure to give you the right analysis. One of the most important segment of our application is that we make sure to provide you with the correct exam analysis. When you are having exam, we make sure to provide you with the previous year questions so that the student can go through the exam pattern and the syllabus and can prepare the exam accordingly based on the pattern. After the exam, we also make sure to provide you with the exam analysis. Then for the students who are preparing for state exams, they will be also beneficial here as we will make sure to provide with state wise current affairs for them. Apart from this, we also make sure to cover the topic wise current affairs such as your national affairs, government schemes, international affairs, banking and finance, economy and businesses as these are the topics from which the examiner definitely asks the question and these are covered on the monthly basis. So friends, do check our application. It will be a one stop solution for learning. Apart from this friends, Career Scout is hiring. We are looking for candidates for subject matter experts in quants reasoning and English and also we are looking for a content creator for current affairs topic on daily basis, weekly basis and monthly basis. There is also an opening for a person who can translate the English content into Hindi. If you want to apply, you can scan the code here for further details or you can go to the description and click the link below. These positions are available both in full time and freelance for serious candidates. Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing important current affairs for 4th of April. The session will be quite interesting and important. So do take notes. They will be very beneficial for your learning. Let's start. The first question is QCI and which organization recently signed a memorandum of understanding to boost the MSME competitiveness. So which is this organization? It is LUB. What does LUB stands for? Lagu. Udyog Bharti, right? They together recently signed this MOU and it was to enhance the participation or we can say to enhance the awareness and participation of MSME competitiveness scheme. Let me show you here. It is QCI that is your Quality Council of India. They signed this MOU with Lagu Udyog Bharti to enhance the awareness and participation in the Ministry of MSME Competitiveness Lean Scheme among the members of Lagu Udyog Bharti. If we talk about this, the MOU lays out a roadmap for the joint activities, awareness campaigns, training sessions, state and district level consultations that aim of promoting the implementation of the lean concepts and sustainable practices among the LUB members. A selected nodal officer from each organization will serve as a single point of contact for all the MCLS related issues in order to facilitate and seamless implementation. Correct? Take a note of this. So it is QCI and LUB that recently signed this MOU. Apart from this, if we talk about NABET that is your National Accreditation Board for Education and Training. This is a constituent board of Quality Council of India that encourages the LUB members to sign up for the MCLS. 
right what is this mcls we just saw don't get confused mcls is your msme competitive lean scheme right so this nabet this is a constituent board of qci that will encourage the lub members to sign up for this mcls scheme additionally it will help the lub members to move up the lean journey from lean basic to lean intermediate and ultimately to lean advanced level the scheme like mcls and zero defect zero effect assisted companies in cutting waste increasing productivity and increasing profitability also this will promote your environments uh sustainable goals right they will focus on sustainable development goals they won't waste the product right it will also enhance to increase their output the quality of the product as well as the production output that will enhance increase their turnover then if we talk about qci quality council of india who is the chairperson here jakshe shah who is the secretary general here rajesh maheshwari headquarter of qci is in new delhi and it was established in 1997 correct moving on next meta earlier known as facebook they have partnered with which organization to expand their fact checking program in india so meta they have partnered with pti pti is your press trust of india right so meta they partnered with pti correct and this pti this is the india's largest news agency correct and this was to establish a dedicated fact checking unit we know that nowadays fake news are everywhere right so in order to provide the correct news to the audience the facts needs to be checked so for the same reason meta they have partnered with pti for this fact checking program in india let me show you here meta earlier known as facebook they partnered with pti that is press trust of india that is the india's largest news agency under their third party fact checking program in india and it was to establish a dedicated fact checking unit under this partnership pti will identify review and rate content for misinformation across meta platforms with this collaboration meta now has 12 fact checking partners in india the highest in any country covering 16 indian languages through existing fact checking partners right if we talk about meta they own and operate platforms such as facebook instagram whatsapp and among other right so these are the basic platforms and in order to provide right knowledge or right news right information to the people on these platforms this fact checking needs to be done right if we talk about this fact checking mechanism meta teams up with certified fact checkers through the international fact checking network to assess and rate viral information across facebook instagram and whatsapp mis information flagged by fact checkers result in reduced distribution and includes notifications and warning labels for users attempting to share such content next next is ministry of health and family welfare they have mandated the linking of cghs beneficiary id with aishman bharat health account id i repeat ministry of health and family welfare mandates the linking of cghs beneficiary id that is central government health scheme beneficiary id with abha id that is aishman bharat health account id with immediate effect from 1st of april 2024 this is aimed at creating digital health identification for cghs beneficiaries and storing their digital health records on this abha id that is aishman bharat health account id here ministry of health and family welfare stated that existing beneficiaries must complete the linking process within 30 days if we talk about cghs this was started in 1954 with the objective of providing comprehensive health care to central government employees pensioners and their dependent family members according to the ministry of health and family welfare approximately 42 lakh beneficiaries are covered under cghs in 18 cities and it offers healthcare based and allopathic and homeopathic medicine as well as ayurveda yunani siddha and yoga if we talk about abha that is aishman bharat digital mission correct this was launched under the national digital health mission in 2021 they provide digital health id and that is the aishman bharat health account to help people to contain their health records in a single platform in this single their health id and abha is a unique health identification identifier as a random 14 digit number and may be issued digitally or in the form of a hard copy that will be specific for a specific 
person right so coming back remember ministry of health and family welfare mandated cghs beneficiary ids that they should link with ayushman bharat health account id and this will be from with effect from 1st of april 2024 next next is mcd what is mcd municipal corporation of delhi they have extended the deadline for geo tagging for geo tagging of properties till which date so mcd they extended their geo tagging of properties till 30th of june 2024 take a note of this and this will provide taxpayers another opportunity to register their properties with mcd correct so mcd that is a civic body of delhi extended the last date for geo tagging of properties till 30th of june to provide taxpayers another opportunity to register their properties with mcd and here mcd this is one of the largest municipal bodies in the world providing civic services to approximately 20 million citizens of delhi previously mcd's deadline for geo tagging 50 lakh homes in delhi was 31st of jan 2024 however the deadline was subsequently postponed to 29th of feb 2024 and then to 31st of march 2024 and now it has again been extended till 30 june 2024 so far only 3.5 lakh out of the targeted 15 lakh homes in delhi have been successfully geo tagged what is geo tagging of properties that we are discussing here that is mandated by mcd right now this is a process that will involve assigning a unique altitude longitude coordinate to a property on a gis map this is done by associating the property's location with a unique property identification code this ensures each property has their location pinpointed with a specific latitude longitude coordinates by accurately mapping these properties the mcd aims to simplify various civic services and enhance the urban planning and improve the overall governance efficiency and mcd they will have a proper data about these locations and these properties next iica that is indian institute of corporate affairs and hp india they have launched esg professional program i repeat iica that is indian institute of corporate affairs they partnered with hp india to launch hp future impact leaders iica certified environmental esg professional program esg is your environmental social governance professional program this will promote sustainability and empower corporate social responsibility csr professionals to emerge as a leaders and navigate in the esg framework right so it is iica and hp india they have launched esg professional program these these uh, these corporate social responsibilities are basically every organization they need to work towards social development they need to work towards environmental development to take care of the environment and make sure that the environment stays clean and they should work towards it so for the same reason iica and hp india they have launched their environment social governance professional program under this program 100% scholarship will be offered to 75 candidates to pursue advanced education in esg candidates must possess a bachelor's degree in any discipline and a minimum of 5 years of experience in relevant fields to be eligible for the program so if the question asked iica and which organization they have launched esg professional program it is with hp india iica partnered with hp india to launch this esg professional program next is tata aig general insurance company they have introduced travel guard plus they have introduced travel guard plus right this is an insurance product direct question can be asked travel guard plus that is an insurance product was launched by which insurance company it is tata aig general insurance company that is a leading general insurance provider they have launched this travel guard plus that is a comprehensive travel insurance product that is aimed at redefining complete coverage for travelers right if we we'll talk about this here customers can choose from three add-on bundles that is cruise bundle travel plus bundle and accident bundle that will cater to specific needs and this product caters to the diverse needs of the people who loves to travel right with a various range of features various range of plans and here 41 different types of covers has been packed under this experience then here travel guard plus they cover loss of personal baggage compensate travel stay accommodation extension upgrade to business class personal accident in india instant gratification for flight delays or cancellations and the customers can customize the coverage for the with optional assistance services including care at home baggage tracking and lost passport tracking also this feature is provided by them if we talk about tata aig general insurance company who is the chairman here saurabh agarwal 
हु इज द मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर एंड चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर हेयर नीलेश गर्ग वेर इज द हेड क्वार्टर मुंबई महाराष्ट्र एंड वेन वॉज दिस इस्टेब्लिश्ड ऑन ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ऑफ जैन इन टू थाउजेंड वन मूविंग ऑन हेयर यू कैन सी देर आर सम अदर फीचर सच एज योर एनुअल मल्टी ट्रिप कवर विद अप टू हंड्रेड डेज पर ट्रिप ड्यूरेशन सिंगल ट्रिप ऑप्शन विद द पॉलिसी ड्यूरेशन ऑफ थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डेज नॉन मेडिकल कवरेज प्लान फॉर स्टूडेंट्स अ सेपरेट प्लान फॉर शेनेगन जियोस्कोप न्यू एज कवर्स इंक्लूड पेंडेमिक कवरेज एंड एडवेंचर स्पोर्ट्स सी दिस शेनेगन एरिया इज बेसिकली फॉर द यूरोपियन ट्रेवलर्स नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज वर्ल्ड बैंक वर्ल्ड बैंक प्रोजेक्टेड इंडियन इकोनॉमी टू ग्रो बाय हाउ मच परसेंट इन ट्वेंटी सो वर्ल्ड बैंक they projected indian economy to grow by how much percent in 2024 so they are projecting that india will be growing by 7.4 percent uh, 7.5 percent in 2024 earlier world bank projected that india will be growing by 6.3 percent but they have revised their estimate and now they are projecting that and they have added 1.2 percent in their projection now india will be growing by 7.5 percent in india 2024 correct take a note of this Here you can see World Bank project Indian economy to grow by seven point five percent in twenty twenty four, and EAP is projected to ease at four point five percent. What is EAP? EAP is your East Asia and Pacific growth. East Asia Pacific EAP growth, and it is projected that the East Asia Pacific region will be growing at by say four point four point five percent in twenty twenty four. Correct. Take a note of this also. Here you can see World Bank South Asia Development Update April. This report was related stated that Indian economy grew by will be growing by seven point four percent in twenty twenty four. Correct. And this EAP East Asia Pacific region will be having a growth of four point five percent in twenty twenty four. Then if we talk about World Bank, who is the president? Ajay Banga, headquarter in Washington D.C. and it was established in nineteen forty four. Here you can see India's output growth is forecasted to reach 7.5 percent in fiscal year 24 before moderating to 6.6 percent in fiscal year 25, primarily due to a deceleration deceleration in the investment. Next, if we look at some other key points, growth in South Asia is expected to be robust at 6 percent in 2024, driven by strong performance of India's economy and the recovery seen in Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Over the medium term, fiscal deficit and government debt in India are projected to decline, supported by robust output growth and consolidation efforts. And India's economic activity in the fourth quarter of 23 exceeded the expectation of 7.2 percent. But we were expecting this growth, but actually we grew by 8.4 percent. And this growth was mainly due to service sector, manufacturing sector, and your infrastructure development that is taking place in India. Then, if we talk about East Asia and Pacific growth, as we saw, it is projected at four point five percent in twenty twenty four. In twenty twenty three, it was five point one percent. Then, China's growth is projected also to moderate to four point five percent due to factors like high debt, weak property sector, and trade frictions. And Pacific island countries are anticipated to experience a slowdown in growth, particularly in the Fiji region. Concerns persist over debt, trade barriers, and policy uncertainties affecting the region's economic dynamism. And even today, we saw that there was a earthquake in Taiwan region, right? And so, because of this, also there can be huge economic disability, and multiple losses can be registered there. Next, another thing, remember some external factors that are affecting the economic performance in the Asia Pacific region. right such as your global trade recovery through the slowing global gross domestic product as we know that everywhere we are seeing that there can be a recession ai is coming job losses there right the consumption in china is also less people are saving more they are spending less right so the global trade recovery through slowing global gross domestic product growth is projected to support economic performance with trade in goods and services to grow by 
2.3% in 2024, that was 0.2% in 2023. The GDP growth will slow down from 2.6% in 2023 to 2.4% in 2024. And apart from this, despite declining inflation in major economies, elevated core inflation and tight labor markets in USA, European Union suggest that interest rate will remain higher, impacting the economic conditions. And even you can see that the gold price right now, it is at the all-time high. We clocked 71,500 per 10 gram that is one tola of gold that is the highest ever price gold has touched so far and it is expected that because of this uh, the rate cuts that there is no the remain that there is the interest rates they will remain higher because the european and us economy they were expecting that there will be a rate cut but because of this scenario there is a high chance that the interest rate will remain same and if the interest remains interest rate remains same then there is a high chance that the gold which is considered to be a safe haven during such times will also increase even further and there is a high chance we can see even higher levels of gold in india Next, there are some other related news such as your Sikkim Chief Minister Prem Singh Tamang launched Sikkim Inspire. Sikkim as inspires and we have seen this what is inspire integrated service provision and innovation for revising economy a world bank assisted program under the planning and development department correct and Sikkim inspires then the government of goa they have announced a partnership with world bank to establish a blended finance facility for climate resilience this initiative aims to assess and mobilize the concessional finance to implement low carbon and climate resilient investment in goa so it is goa government they partnered with world bank and it is to finance the climate resilient projects next next is bmw group and tata tech they have signed a joint venture agreement to develop automotive software and it hub i repeat bmw group and tata technologies that is a subsidiary of tata motors they signed a joint venture to establish automotive software and information technology development hub in pune maharashtra bangalore and chennai tamil nadu so this uh Automotive software and IT development hub will be in Pune, Bangalore and Chennai. Take, take a note of this. Next, this joint venture will supply automotive software including the software defined vehicle solutions for the premium vehicles in BMW group and digital transformation solutions for their business IT. Here Bangalore and Pune, they will be the main centers of this operation and development and in Chennai, the primary focus would be on the business IT solution. The Tata Tech that is based in Pune, this is a global product engineering and digital service company and Munich Germany based BMW is the world's leading provider of the premium cars and motorcycle. We all know about the BMW cars, correct? Next. Next is, next is Abdel Fateh al-Sisi has been sworn in as the Egypt's president for the third term. I repeat, I repeat Abdel Fateh al-Sisi has taken oath as the president of Egypt for the third term in new administrative capital of the country. The 69-year-old former army chief will continue with his presidential power till 2030 that followed constitutional amendment that extended the presidential term to six years allowing him to stand for the third election. Right. So coming back, remember Abdel Fateh Al Sisi sworn in as the Egypt's president for the third term, and here he can see he has won the election in December with 89.6 percent of the votes, with no major challengers. And the re-elected president, in his speech, promised an increased spending on programs that targets the poor and engaging the private sector in line with the commitment that helped secure and expand 8 billion dollar deal with the IMF. Next, if we talk about Abdel Fateh al-Sisi, he graduated from the Egyptian Military Academy in 1977 and then he served in the infantry. In 2010, he was appointed to the post of Directors of Military Intelligence. Abdel Fateh al-Sisi became the youngest member of the Supreme Council of the Armed Force in 2011, a body of senior military officers that took over the governing of Egypt. And he was then promoted to the position of Defense Minister and Commander of the Armed Force in August 2012. What is the capital of, oh sorry, what is the headquarter of Egypt? Cairo. An Egyptian pound is the currency that is used here. Next is Sorin Investment Fund Chairman Sanjay Nair takes over as the Asochem President for 2014 and 15. What is Asochem? Associated Chamber of Commerce and Industry of India. This is the India's oldest apex industry chamber. Correct. And for the year 24-25, that is for fiscal year 25, who has been appointed as the President Sanjay Nayar, correct? Previously, he served as the Vice President of Asacham. He will succeed whom? He will be succeeding Ajay Singh, who is the Chairman and Managing Director 
of Spicejet, who served as the Asochom's president for 23-24. So, uh, Sanjay Nayar will be replacing whom? Ajay Singh. Take a note of this. Then if we talk about Sanjay Nayar, he has previously served as the CEO of City Group's Indian and South Asian operation and was a member of City Group's Global Management Committee and Asia Executive Operating Committee. He established KKR India operations in 2019 after leaving, uh, 2009 after leaving City Group. After serving as the CC, uh, CEO, Chairman and Senior Advisor of KKR, he retired in April 2000. 23. He also served as the Asian Investment and Portfolio Management Committee of KKR. If we talk about Asocham, who is the president, we just saw Sanjay Nayar. It was established in, 2000, in 1920 and the headquarters is in New Delhi. Next, let's move to some CCI approvals on 2nd of April. CCI approved the following approvals. First is acquisition of shares of MG Motor India Private Limited by Indo Edge India Fund Large Value Fund Scheme. Second, acquisition of CCPS in Northern Arc Capital Limited by International Finance Corporation. Third, acquisition of Nagarjuna Fertilizers and Chemicals Limited Assets and 100% shareholding of Grenko 0C Private Limited by AMG India. Fourth, acquisition of 10.39% of Annapurna Finance and subscription to its certain debentures by Piramal Alternatives Trust. Then, acquisition of 100% equity stake of Sher Khan Limited and Human Value Developers Private Limited collectively by Mirai Asset Capital Markets Private Limited and Mirai Asset Securities Company Limited, respectively. If we look at it, MG Motors India, correct acquisition of MG Motor India by InfoEdge India Fund LVF scheme. Here remember CCI approved the acquisition of approximately 8% share capital that is 8.7% of the voting and economic rights of MG Motor India along with certain rights by InfoEdge India Fund large value fund schemes. This is the acquirer. Who is being acquired? MG Motor India. Then next acquisition of CCPS in Northern R Capital Limited by IFC. So CCPS is your compulsory convertible preference scheme. So CCI approved the acquisition of fully paid Series C, CCPS in North R Capital Limited. This is the target by IFC, that is International Finance Corporation. Then next, CCI approved the acquisition of NFCL assets and 100% shares of 0C by AMG India. So, CCI, they approved the acquisition of Nagarjuna Fertilizers and Chemicals Limited assets and 100% shareholding of Grenco 0C Private Limited by AMG India using proceeds of investment received from the AMG entities, Baker Street Investment, Gentari International Renewables and Platinum Rock B 2004 RSC Limited. Then acquisition of 10.39% shares of Annapurna Finance by Piramal Alternative Trust. Correct. So 10.39% shares of Annapurna Finance will be acquired by whom? Piramal Alternative Trust. Next, next news is F1 owner Liberty Media acquired MotoGP owner Dorna Sports. I repeat, Liberty Media Corporation, that is Liberty Media, they have acquired or they have signed an agreement to acquire approximately 86% of the Dorna Sports, correct? That is the exclusive commercial and television rights holder of MotoGP from Bridgepoint and Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. Important, take a note of this. So, F1 owner Liberty Media, they have acquired 86% of Dorna Sports that have the commercial, exclusive commercial and TV rights of MotoGP. Then the equity consideration comprises 65% cash and 21% in shares of Series C Liberty F1 common stock. Here Dorna management retained 14% of their equity in the business and the transaction reflects an enterprise value for MotoGP of 4.2 billion euro and an equity value of 3.5 billion euro with the existing debt balance at MotoGP. Next is WHO World Health Organization has unveiled Sahara. Sara. What is this Sara? This is the first AI powered digital health promoter. I repeat, WHO World Health Organization on 2nd April has launched this Sara that is Smart AI Resource Assistant for Health. This is the first digital health promoter prototype with the enhanced empathetic response powered by generative artificial intelligence. Correct? This is the first AI powered digital health promoter that is Sara. Launched by whom? It was launched by WHO. This SARA, also known as SARA, is promoted by Biological AI Technology of Soul Machines Limited. Here, SARA utilizes 
generative AI for enhanced empathetic responses and real-time accuracy. Here, it aims to empower users to optimize their health and well-being journey, providing the correct responses in the environment and error-free responses so that they can also work towards their healthy diet and physical activity. Correct? Sara. Take a note of this. Launched by WHO. Who is the Director General of WHO? Tedros Gibrises. Headquarter is in Geneva, Switzerland and it was in 1948 that this was established. Next is Golden Globe winning American actress Barbara Rush has recently passed away at the age of 97 in Los Angeles, California, USA. She was born on 4th of January 1927 in Denver, Colorado, USA. She won Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year Actress category in 1954 for her role in It Came From Space. So she recently passed away. Next is 260th raising day of the Army Medical Corps was observed on 3rd April 2024. I repeat, on 3rd of April, we observed the 260th raising day of the Army Medical Corps. It was celebrated by Indian Army. It is a specialist corps in the Indian Army that provides medical services to all serving and veteran Army personnel as well as their families. So coming back, if we talk about this Indian Medical Service, it has a rich history dating back to 1612, correct? And it intervened with the development of East India Company and British presence in India. John Woodall was appointed as the first surgeon general. And in, 1970, uh, in 1764, the surgeons were made into a regular establishment of East Indian Company's armies. If we talk about 2024 events, a walkathon and a cyclothon was organized at the Armed Force Medical College in Pune, Maharashtra on 29th of March to commemorate 260th anniversary of the raising day of the Army Medical Corps. If we talk about this AMC, it is one of the medical services of the Armed Force Medical Services, correct? And Armed Force Medical, so this was the 206th anniversary of the Army Medical AMRC, that is your Army Medical Corps, 26th edition. 260th edition not 26 260th edition right so friends these were your important current affairs for the day now let's move to some revision part that will be very beneficial for your learning according to ministry of defense a data was released and that data, data stated that the defense export touched a record of how much amount in fy24 so remember this question becomes important as we are heavily investing or india is working towards our defense sector right we are making or we are say we are focusing on manufacturing of defense equipments and instead of importing those equipments we want to make the in-house manufacturing facilities for those technology but now our data also came that we have also started exporting those equipments and india has record the Highest ever defense export of how much amount? 21,083 crore rupees. Right? This is the amount. This is the highest amount that we have touched so far. This is close to 2.63 billion dollar. And this is for fiscal year 24. Correct? And if we compare to fiscal year 23, this is a growth of almost 32.5% of our defense export. Right. Last year in fiscal year 23, it was close to 15,290 crore rupees. And this year we did 21,083 crore rupees in our defense export. Right. And remember, the latest figure indicates that the defense export has grown by 13 times if we compare to fiscal year 14. Right. This from fiscal year 14, our defense export has grown by 13 times. Next question is, what is the budget of electric mobility promotion scheme for 2024? So remember recently, government of India, they have introduced a new electric mobility promotion scheme, EMPA scheme for 2024. And it will be applicable from 1st of April 24. Correct. And this will continue till the end of the July 24. Correct. So what is the budget that has been allocated here? So this scheme, EMPA scheme has allocated a budget of almost 500 crore rupees. Right. And this EMPA scheme was introduced by which ministry? It was introduced by Ministry of Heavy Industries. It was launched on 13th of March 24. This scheme aims to promote 
adoption of electric vehicles in india i repeat what is the aim of this emps to promote adoption of electric vehicles in india correct take a note of this and that two specific electric vehicles that is two wheelers and your three wheelers for two wheelers as well as your three wheelers for their adoption to promote the adoption of these two wheelers and three wheelers electric vehicles in india this emps scheme electric mobility promotion scheme was launched with an outlay of 500 crore rupees correct and as of now the scheme will be implemented for how many months it will be implemented for four months as we saw here from 1st of april to uh, 31st of july correct 2024 next is gagan shakti right this exercise gagan shakti 24 where was this held so gagan shakti exercise was held where it was held in field firing range of jaisalmer rajasthan in jaisalmer rajasthan apart from this remember apart from rajasthan this was held also in bhuj in gujarat right then in arunachal pradesh correct this exercise was held but remember mainly in Pokhran, Rajasthan, this exercise was conducted and in Bhuj in Gujarat and in Arunachal Pradesh. This exercise was held from 1st of April to 10th of April and it was to display the prowess in executing high intensity operations across India. Then this exercise was conducted by whom? This was conducted by Indian Air Force. This was a 10 day long exercise as we saw from 1st of April to 10th of April. Moving on, next is Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. They recently signed a contract for Indian Navy NGMV project with which organization? So Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, they signed a contract worth 1173 crore rupees and it was with Cochin Shipyards Limited. Correct, this Cochin Shipyard Limited where is located? It is in Kochi, Kerala. And this is for the supply of 6 LM2500 gas turbines and auxiliaries. Right, I repeat. Here, Hall, they signed a contract with. Next is our homework section. First, recently National Commission for Women signed an MOU with which security force to control human trafficking. Second, what is the rank of India in World Happiness Report 2024? Third, state of global climate report recently seen in news is released by which organization? Fourth, recently who has been appointed as the ambassador of India to Russia? And fifth, Valmiki Tiger Reserve recently seen in news is located in which state? So these are your five homework question friends and I need to see maximum participation from all the students watching this video. That's all for the day friends. I hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the YouTube channel as well as apart from YouTube channel, you can go and follow us at Affairs Cloud Telegram channel. And if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application, you can contact us on the number provided that is 76773382. Apart from this, friends, you can follow us on the Facebook as well as on Instagram handle that is Affairs Cloud underscore official. In the end, friends, if you use a code that is Vikas10, you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code Vikas10. Also, if you have any problem regarding the course purchase, any problem regarding to our application, you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862. And if you want to mail us, you can also mail us on support at the rate of affairscloud.com. And I assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue.